one. Good morning to those that are watching live stream all over this country and the countries around the world. I hope you are being blessed by what you're hearing. And from the comments you make, I know you're being blessed. Today, another one of your rhema word from the Lord to you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the spirit of complacency. The spirit of complacency. The spirit of complacency is a spirit of feeling self-satisfaction. Feeling self-satisfaction. It is a branch of the spirit of pride. It is a branch of the spirit of pride. Pride. Complacent spirit is very dangerous for a warrior. If you are engaged in a fight, the spirit of complacency will make you relax, thinking that you have defeated the enemy. But you don't realize that the, your defeat has made the enemy regroup reorganize and make him realize his failures so he's correcting his mistakes to come in another way to attack you if you have defeated him in one way he's planning to come to you in ten ways and the spirit of complacency will make you relax and make you talk about yesterday's achievement and yesterday's success and that makes you relax today you boast to talk about what you gained yesterday how you succeeded yesterday how you made the profits yesterday how you overcame yesterday how you had the victory yesterday so you take yesterday's victory and yesterday's success to today and when you think of yesterday it makes you Relax today and you declare yourself a holiday today. And when you take that holiday and it makes you relax and have the spirit of complacency come upon you, welcome to defeat. Welcome to defeat. You are declaring your ending, you are declaring your defeat. You are inviting the doors wide for the devil to come in many ways to attack you. The spirit of complacency is a dangerous spirit. In a fight, you can't rest. In a war, you can't rest. You must be up and about. Your eyes must be open. Day and night, you must be aware the enemy might attack any time. When warriors relax, that's when you give a chance to the devil to come to attack you and destroy. You and I are involved in a fight. We fight against the devil and his kingdom and his territory. We fight against sin. We fight against the carnal nature, which is the nest of the devil. The devil uses your carnal nature and nests sin in you through carnal nature. Satan's open doors in your life are through the carnal nature. So every day you must be fighting. Every day you must be up and about. You must be on your shoes. You must be wearing your, wearing your helmet. You must be wearing the breastplate of righteousness. You must be ready with the sword of the word of God. You must be wearing your belt, the good news to preach the gospel. You must be fully dressed every day. 
what Ephesians chapter 6 talks about. Fully dressed to go to war every day. The devil and his kingdom and his territory and his allies, they are seeking whom he may devour. Roaring like a roaring lion. The devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Destroy who? Destroy you and your family, your life, your future. So you shouldn't be resting. You should have no complacent spirit. Complacent spirit will open the door wide. You will invite the devil to come to you to attack you. Complacent spirit is like a sitting duck and makes you like a sitting duck. Sitting there for the devil to shoot you and kill you. One side. It becomes like a one-sided war. You are not aware. You are not active. You are sitting there and relaxing in yesterday's success. And that's when you become an easy target for the devil. I want to show you some things. The spirit of complacency is a spirit of pride. It's a spirit of self-admiration. You admire yourself. You lift yourself. You exalt yourself and see, I have achieved this so far. I've done that so far. I have fasted enough. I've given enough. I've given support enough. I pay tithes enough. I have done that enough. It's now time for me to relax. Welcome to defeat. Yesterday I prayed till daybreak. Tomorrow I rest. Welcome to defeat. You cannot depend on, depend on yesterday's success to defeat the devil today. Today is another day with 24 hours. Yesterday was another day with 24 hours. Tomorrow will be another day with 24 hours with his own work, with his own lifestyle. So you cannot rely on yesterday's success and achievement. Today you're going to achieve what you're supposed to achieve. Today you're going to do what you're supposed to do. Today you're going to be what you're supposed to be. Today you're going to get what you're supposed to get. Today you're going to produce what you're supposed to produce. Today you're going to multiply what you're supposed to multiply. Today you're going to push what you're supposed to push. Today you're going to support what you're supposed to support. Today you're going to give what you're supposed to give. You cannot rely on yesterday's work. You cannot rely on yesterday's success. You cannot rely and relax on what you have done and achieved yesterday. Today is today. Today has got its own work. Today has got its own things to do. The spirit of complacency is a spirit of self-esteem. You think good about yourself. I am better. I have done well. I have achieved. I have gone to the place I want to go. I have gained what I wanted to gain. I look the way I want to look. So today I can relax and rest. Welcome to defeat. The spirit of complacency is a spirit of congratulating yourself. The spirit of complacency is a spirit of congrat congratulating yourself. Instead of other people con congratulating you, you are congratulating yourself. I congratulate myself. I congratulate myself. I have done well. I have achieved. I have given. I have supported. I have done this. I've gone to the place where I want to go. Relax. Welcome to defeat. It is a spirit of self-love. Self-opinion. It's a spirit of self-importance. It's a spirit of self-glory. It's a spirit of self-conceit. It is a spirit of self-assumption. It is a spirit of self-good feeling. Self, 
satisfaction. You feel so good that you have arrived, that you have done enough. Every one of you sitting here, when you think that you have given enough for the work of the Lord, you have done enough for somebody. You think you have done enough for somebody. You have done enough good. Well, if you have done enough good, then what else do you want to do? So you have done enough good, so you want to do in, enough bad or evil? What else do you want to do? That's when you invite defeat. So you have enough supported enough the work of the Lord. So now you want to go and support the work of the devil? What else do you want to do? That's when you invite defeat. Not only for yourself. You also invite the defeat to your family, to your wives, your children, your future. Yeah, I will show you shortly. Right? Don't run away. I'm going to show you shortly. You talk about yesterday's success and you feel good about it. You boast about your achievements yesterday and you feel that you don't have to do any more. That you need a time of uh, congratulation for yourself and you relax. Relax. Mm, relax. Complacency will shut your mind, your spirit, your soul and your body to a place where you are marketing yourself for the devil to attack you cheaply and easily. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. Complacency makes you close your own doors in your mind and your life and puts your life to a sleep. Complacency is like you drinking a sleeping pill tranquilizer so I sleep today because I worked yesterday last week I achieved so I sleep today I've done enough get this medicine of complacency and go to sleep you're welcoming poverty downfall of your life has begun the end of your ministry has come the end of your business will come. God made you to work. You work until you die. You work until you leave the earth. There's no way you can rest. We are born to work. Moses worked until he was 120 years and the Lord said, that's enough. Come to Mount Nebo. Elijah worked and worked. And the Lord said, I'm sending a chariot to get on board. Come up. Paul worked and worked and says, the time is coming for me to go up. Peter said, very soon I will put the tent away. And John Baptist said, oh, I must finish. He must increase. And Jesus said, it is finished. When God says it isn't finished, you must not say finish yourself. Don't bring yourself to an end by the spirit of complacency. When you invite the spirit of complacency you invite the spirit of laziness, weakness. You invite the spirit of defeat. You invite many doors for the devil to come into you, your life, and your family. Satan is eagerly waiting for you to embrace and welcome the spirit of complacency. That is when he will attack you. He will put every weapon against you and make sure you are his target. 
you are positioning yourself and putting yourself forward for the devil to attack you easily. When a man in a battlefield is moving up and down, is jumping up and down with his weapons, running here and there, it's very hard to shoot him. But when he's relaxing, sitting down, then it's easy to shoot him. What is hard to shoot when they're running around, jumping up and down, moving? But when they relax, that's when you can position your arrow, your boss, your weapon, and just bring him down. When you are sitting and relaxing, that's when the devil will position his weapons and shoot you easily. When you are complacent, you are inviting the spirit of laziness, spirit of weakness, spirit of defeat, declaring your own ending. You are inviting sin and temptation. I'll give you one example, and there is enough example in the Bible that will summarize everything for you. One man called King David. When it was the time for kings to go to war, he sent his troop and his commanders to fight. But in those days, when kings go to war, the commanders go for commanders, king go for king, you know. Battalions go for battalions. Infantry men, they go for infantry men. So they go for their own kind in the field. Commander versus commander, army versus army, king versus king. So where is the king of Israel when the commanders are in the field? The king of Israel is having a good rest when the army is fighting. When he's supposed to fight, he's having a good rest. When he's having a good rest, this is the right time for the devil to throw ideas the king is not moving the king is not on the move the king is not working the king is not fighting the king is not about his business he's relaxing nicely in his comfortable house and that's when he became an easy target for the devil he's not moving he's sitting the devil says go up the roof of the house just relax and go up. So he goes up to the roof of the house and the devil says, look around. Looks around, sees beautiful Besemba. You look at your wives. They're not as beautiful as Besemba. You have the power. You are the king. You can marry whom you want to marry. Eat what kind of food you want to eat. Go anywhere you want to go. Marry whom you want to marry. Even if it means adultery, you have the power. Use that authority to get it. So you can have the women of your desire. So King David, she is not a young virgin where you can have a free right to get that woman. She is married to a man and if you pick up that woman, it's called adultery. It's against the word of God and the same word of God took you away from looking up the sheep to shepherd his people. He took you away from the jungles to become, to live in a city and to live in a palace. The same word who took you away from the jungles, from a shepherd boy to become the king, is the same word that says you shall not commit adultery. Your complacency spirit has invited the door for the devil to speak to you because you're not fighting, you are not up and about in your work, you are not king in the field going with the army to fight, you are resting. Welcome to your downfall. Mm. You relax today. And you become an easy target for the devil. The devil doesn't have to follow you like this to shoot you. You sit there, bam! You will receive it one side. The arrows will be received to one side. You will be a wounded man. 
uh, David says, get dead women for me. He's the king. He's using his authority. But he's abusing his authority for self-gain, for self-gratification. That's what complacent spirit will do to you. You are inviting your downfall through a complacent spirit. David thought that he was entertaining his lust and flesh. And that is his sin. He forgot that he was the king of Israel. He forgot that he was the father of children. He forgot that he was the husband of wives. He was committing a sin that he will face the consequences. And the wife and the children and the nation of Israel and his throne will face the consequences of his sin. He didn't realize that he was bringing the end of himself. And that all happened because of a complacent spirit. If he went to war, this would have never taken place. He would have never seen Bezimba. He would have never committed adultery. He would have not allowed his children to face the consequences. The death of his two sons, the raping of his tama, his beautiful daughter, and all the consequences that we read of about David. One spirit of complacency brought down his throne, his life, his children, his family. And I speak to you. Become complacent today and you'll bring yourself down tomorrow and your family down tomorrow, your life down tomorrow, your future and your destiny. If you're a pastor listening to me and you're complacent, your anointing will be removed. You'll become carnal and there will be no anointing. The Spirit of God will not use you. You'll be a dry, dry, dead pastor relying on your position for your influence but the real life and real anointing and the real power behind will leave you and you become a dry pastor, dry evangelist. And you will talk about other denominations, other ministries and try to put them down to gain on the other side. Because you don't have the anointing to attract. People are, not, people are not attracted because of your knowledge or understanding. People are not attracted because of your good looks or what you have. People are attracted to your anointing. Anointing attracts. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing lifts up the burden of the people. Not your power. Not your might. Not your money. Not your materials. Not how you good look good, or how your achievements or how well and articulated you put your sermon in order. Anointing attracts. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing lifts up the burden of the people. Anointing will smash sickness and disease. Anointing will smash worry. Anointing will smash all the things. And if you are entertaining a spirit of complacency, you will become like a dry, dead, born pastor or an evangelist or a preacher. Get back to track and be with the Lord and increase in anointing. It's good for you, good for your family, good for your church, good for your ministry. And good for your life. Anyone who invites the spirit of complacency invites death to your door, trouble to your door, invites problem to your door, invites your ending to your door. If you have that spirit today, right? I want you to deal with it right now. Repent of it right now and come out of it and God will deliver you because if you don't, tomorrow you don't know what is going to happen. This afternoon you don't know what's going to happen. Satan will tell you to look at Besimba. When you're supposed to be on your knees, when you're supposed to be praying, you're watching videos. You're watching YouTube things that are not right. You're watching this and that. You're doing this and that you don't supposed to do. I will relax a little bit and do this. Welcome to defeat. Welcome to carnal life. You are declaring your ending, unending. Stand on your feet, everybody. If you think that you have done enough, 
you had success enough. I've gone to the place where I wanted to go. Self-exaltation, self-satisfaction, self-feeling of good, self-congratulations, self, it's all about self. It is a branch of a spirit of pride. And pride comes before fall. I want you to repent of it. Come out of it so that the devil will not defeat you tomorrow. Get back to the track where you used to be. Get back to the track. Get back to the life. Right? If you have relaxed, support more. Give more. Push life more. Push the ministry more. Push. Do good to mankind more and more. Don't stop. Do what you are called to do. Yesterday is yesterday. Today is today. Tomorrow is tomorrow. And do not relax on yesterday's success. And invite the spirit of complacency. Spirit of complacency will kill you alive. See what has happened with David? He faced the consequences until he died. And brought trouble to his family. Disaster, death to his family. And the spirit of complacency will do the same yourself. You might think it's you, but you don't know that you are ahead of the family. That is bringing the spirit and bringing destruction to your family. So now, if you have the spirit, if you have some thoughts like this in your life, repent of it now before you are destroyed. I warn you, this is a rhema word for a pastor, a teacher, a Christian, and anybody that's watching me alive today. This is a rhema word for you. Turn around, repent of the spirit, get back to work again, and you can be on the move again. You are not over until God says it's over. You are not finished until God says it's finished. You are not done until God says it's done. Come to Mount Nebo. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I invite you to come and deal with the spirit of complacency in the church, in the ministry, and all over the world. Whoever is watching life this morning, Lord, I pray that you will deal with the spirit of complacency. If people think that we have done enough, that's the in, inviting defeat. Lord, I want you to come and defeat the spirit and remove the spirit and destroy the spirit of complacency in this ministry and in the hearts and lives of people and families. It makes them relax and bring an end to their own lives and the future and the ministry and their call. Life singers come on the stage. We want to sing a song this morning and invite people to repent the devil will attack you easily because you're not on the defense you're not on the offensive and you are a sitting dark for the devil to hit you and attack you and shoot at you if you feel that you have that spirit and you feel that you want to repent you can stay where you are and repent of it and come out of it before it destroys you and your family with the spirit of complacency you must destroy this at the altar or wherever you are today if there are new people that you feel that you need to repent and give your life to the lord and you have become an easy target for that devil and you have been receiving missiles and thoughts and ideas and the devil has been attacking you because you have not been praying you have not been on the watch out you have not been reading you have not been up to date with the lord the devil has been throwing all kinds of ideas and you are in between falling and standing. Yeah. Big disaster. You have to set your heart right right now. The Lord is speaking to you. The wife might not know what you are thinking. The husband might not know what you are thinking. Parents might not know what the children are thinking. But I'm telling you that if you have lived this life and allow things to settle in the mind and they're harassing you day and night, this is the time to destroy the devil's altar, the spirit of complacency. As we sing this song, let's do that. And those that are watching live, you can also do the same as we are doing it. If you have that spirit of complacency, just come out of it. Before the devil destroys you through that spirit, you destroy the spirit right now. In Jesus' name, wherever you are listening to me, all over the world. And we will see you at the same time next Sunday. Bye for now.